So these are these are the current interoperable formats. One is DXE, CSE, XML, and JSON. Okay. The last part is also very very important. The JSON. Because XML is also duplicated. XML also duplicated. Right now, no one is using both these XML. Because few projects are just still existing projects are using XML. So few things you cannot do with JSON. So those things will configure by using XML. So maybe these two these two things are the very very important now in the industry XML and JSON. So these are the interoperable formats. Interoperable formats in the sense in any programming language, in any technology, in any programming language or in any platform, you can read these formats: TXT, CSV, XML, and JSON. So what is the first one? TXT, right? So how will you maintain the data in the TXT format? Discuss before going to that. What is the need of this interoperability? What is the need of interoperability? Do you remember or not? The first day, I give you an example. Matrimony site. Have you remember? So let us take. There are few matrimony sites are there like shadi.com, bharatmatrimony.com, enodipellibandri.com. There are few matrimony sites. Okay, let us take. Tell me some matrimony site names. Shadi.com. Next. Every day, every day I'll get some mails from this website. Weddingbells.com. Next. Inadpelipandri.com. So, Mr. Yes, Kola. If you have any enemies, let me phone number is there, right? So don't do anything. This is for in the matrimony site. That's it. So, next, any any other site? Hmm. Telugu matrimony.com. Let us take tm.com. So now, now I started uh, my own matrimony site. Let us take maheshmatrimony.com. So maheshmatrimony.com. This is another. It's, I created this. Let us take it's a it's a mobile application. It's an Android application. So recently I started this maheshmatrimony.com. One user is registered in maheshmatrimony.com. So I have to provide some services to him, right? Correct or not? So recently I started, I don't have any data. I don't have not even one profile also with me. Then what, how, can I how can I provide the data to the person, to the user? I think the data should be available with you or not? Yes. So here, I contacted these people. So these people are in the industry, popular. These people are having popular matrimony sites in the industry. This shadi.com people, enodipelipandri.com people, and weddingbells.com people. So, was I started, I started a new uh, matrimony website. So, I don't have any profiles with me. Just uh, already you have some data right with you. So, just give your data. Give your data to me. You don't need to give it free of cost. I'll pay. I'll pay for that. I'll pay for the data. And you no need to give the entire data also. I'll make some requests. Let us say 91 girl. So who is from 22 to 26? So these are the let us say some qualifications. I'll specify. I'll specify, I'll make a request. I'll pass some input parameters. What is the age? What is the region? What is the gender? And all these input parameters, I'll make a request to you and put it down. These people are having some data, right? You no need to give your entire data to me based on my request. Based on my request, what are the avail available profiles are there with you? Just only give the data to them. That's it. So this enodpellipandri.com is up. People is agreed because we are paying, right? We are paying some amount for the data. So all these people are agreed to give the data. This shadi.com people, weddingless.com people, so telugumatrimony.com people. If it is mandatory, I will give this courtesy from so and so shadi.com people. Meaning this record is 
I fetch this record from. So meaning, I'm a single platform. Here, I'm a single platform for multiple sites. So, for example, Shadi.com people is having 10,000 posts. Telugu Mandalay.com people having 10,000. Now, in my in my data, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. What is your cost? So I can provide better services or not? Yes, I can provide better services to the user. So all these people are agreed. Now the problem came. Let us take. I'm developing this website by using Java technology. So this telugumatrimony.com website is developed by using the .NET. Let us take it's a PHP. It is by using Java. It's, 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 it is by using. .NET. So how will you make a request? How will you make a request from your .NET and Java system to .NET? I will make a request. I want to send some data from my Java system to .NET system. As well as I want to get some data from the .NET system to Java system. Here, here in Java, object is maintained. Object is maintained. Sorry, the data is maintained in object. What is the meaning of object? Object means data and behavior, right? So who contains the data? Object contains the data. So can you get the object from one JVM to another JVM? Can you get the object outside the system? No, we cannot get. We cannot get the object from outside the system. That is not possible. That is not possible. We cannot get the object from outside the JVM. So what is the alternative? Definitely, definitely, I have to send some data. I have to send some data to this .NET system. Web applications are different ports. I'm not talking about the web application. You will make some request www.google.com. Okay. So meaning from in your browser, in your browser you are opening the Google page. That's it. www.shadi.com people. Shadi.com. This Shadi.com page will open. But now what is the requirement? I want to send some input data from my Java system to this .NET system. And here also you get some data from .NET system to Java system. Even if you can, if you send a Java object to a .NET system. .NET system cannot understand the Java object. Even if you get a response also in .NET, the Java system cannot understand the .NET response. So both has to communicate in a same format, interoperable format. I already given an example also. A Telugu person is there and one Tamil person is there. So how can you establish a communication between these two persons? There should be one mediator or both has to communicate in a same understandable format. So that same understandable format is one of the same, so one of the interoperable format is what? Why only XML you can ask me? There are other formats also there, interoperable formats, .txt, CSV, XML, JSON, different formats are there. But why why you have to use XML for sharing the data, for transfer the data? Writing the object data, writing the object data into one XML, one file format, this concept is called as what? Civilization. Writing the object data, writing the object data into one file format is called as civilization. What is the problem here? You cannot send the object, right? So who told you to send the object? Write the data into one file. Write the data into one file. Send that file to the .NET system. A .NET system can read this XML file. .NET knows how to read the data from a file. For example, there is one class box. This is your, this is one class. Let us take test is a class name. Okay. This this test class contains this test class contains two integer variables a comma b. A is having some data. Let us take a is equal to ten, b is equal to twenty. Class test a is equal to ten and b is equals to twenty. So same data. We can represent in XML in this format. Same data you can represent in XML format like this. 
It is also contains a, it is also contains a return operand. Yes. So directly we will not send the object, we will not send. First we will convert that object data into one file and we will transfer that file. So what is the what is the question? Why only XML? Why not some other formats? For example, let us take a .txt file. How will you represent the data in a .txt file? Data in LR represent yes, sir. Text file. Text format, right? Normal text. Okay. So let us take. For example, I want to maintain some data. How can you how can you write? For example, one, two, three, Mahesh. Next. Hmm. This is one record. So let us take one more record, one, two, four. If you represent the data like this, if you represent the data like this, is it understandable format? No, right? Is it understandable format? No. Have thousand records. So which one is which one is ID here? Which one is name? Which one is designation? Okay. So we have some readability problem. So that's why the second file is second file is what? CSV, comma separated values. Let us take one, two, three. Next, Mahesh. Project this is the second format. The values we are going to separate with comma. This comma separated value is also suitable if we have only one type of data. For example, I want to maintain only the employee IDs I want to maintain. At that time, you can go for the comma separated value. In your mobile phone, there is an option called export. Export contacts. Export contacts to CSV. So at that time you only will get all the mobile numbers are going to store in one CSV format. So here also the problem is readability problem. So I'll give the data like this. So which one is ID? Which one is which one is the designation? Let us say I have one more tag call. I have one. I want to maintain one more thing that is department ID. So now tell me, is it a department ID or is it a, is it if it is an is it an employee? ID? You created this comma separated values. You know which one is employee ID, which one is department ID. For example, I'll send this, I'll send this comma separated value to one server. We don't know where the server is located. So who is operating that server? Who is who is accessing the data? So at that time, here once again the problem, the problem of readability. You cannot read the data. Correct or not? Yes. So here comma separated value is also we have some readability problem. This comma separated value is suitable if you want, if you are maintaining only one type of data. I am maintaining only employee IDs, or I am maintaining only names, or I am maintaining only designations. At that time, we can go for comma separated values. So, here, if you want to maintain the multiple values, the best approach is what? XML. Okay. So, in XML, easily you can maintain the data. This is one best example. So I am maintaining the list of employees. I am maintaining the list of employees I am maintaining. Okay. This is one employee record. In the employee record, there are three fields of their employee ID, employee name, designation. If you have one more employee record, then what you have to do? Inside the employees, you have to create one more employee record you have to create. Okay. So you can you can maintain, like this, you can maintain n number of records in a XML. So one problem is overcome, that is Readability problem. Okay. Next, I told you right. What is the last format? JSON format. We will discuss about JSON also after completion of this XML. Just hard to take one hour time to discuss this JSON also because these are the most important concepts in the industry. XML and JSON. Just I'll give a sample. How can you represent this same XML data in JSON format? This is one sample XML file. This is one sample JSON file. Okay. 
This is an equivalent JSON file for the XML file. In the entire JSON file, only you will find two things. The two things are, one is JSON object. The object is going to represent it. The clause brackets. Another one is a JSON array. JSON object and JSON array. So array is going to represent it. The square brackets. Object is going to represent it. Clause brackets. Array is going to represent it. Square brackets. The entire JSON file, only you will get, only you will find two things only. Either JSON object or Mainly, this XML concept, where this XML concept is used? So, what do you understand this example? Mainly, where this XML concept or JSON concept is used? Mainly, this XML concept or JSON concept, which is used to transfer the data, correct? Or not? Which is used to transfer the data between multiple technologies. If you want to transfer some data to the multiple technologies, we use either XML or JSON. So here, mainly this XML and JSON concept, which is used to transfer the data, right? So we understand up to this. So in this example, in this example, which one is which one will occupy very less space? JSON. JSON will occupy less space, or XML occupies less space. JSON. So which one occupies less space? Obviously, JSON will occupy less space. For example, you will open www.facebook.com bus. You will find, for each and every photo, you will find 100 likes, 100 comments, next, 100 suggested friends, correct or not? So how much data is having Facebook? N number of data, right? So at that time, imagine if it is using XML. Imagine if it is it is having 10 KB of space. Let us say the JSON file is going to occupy only 1 KB. I am not from easy background, but I am also an easy student. Why do you use machines, cables, and cables? Why do you use 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 cables? In office, They give you a task. You have to open it. 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 Medical devices are communicated. You have to open it. You have to open it. You have to open it. Medical devices are open it. Pulse meter. BP monitor. Body temperature. Everything is medical devices. I will show you one website. Let us open it. Just two minutes.
అన్ని మేజ్ డిస్ప్లే అవుతున్నాయి కానీ కావాల్సినవి మాత్రం రాలే ఇంకా జనాలకు బోర్ కొట్టేసింది బాస్ ఫ్రాంక్ చెప్పాలంటే బోర్ కొట్టేసింది అదే ప్రాజెక్టులు అవే క్రూడ్ ఆపరేషన్స్ రీడింగ్ రైటింగ్ మాడిఫైంగ్ డిలీటింగ్ ఏ ప్రాజెక్ట్ తీసుకున్నా ఈ ఫోర్ దాపైనా కొత్త ఉంటాయా మరి ఎందుకు జనాలు ఎంత కష్టపడుతున్నా నాకు అర్థం కావడంలా ఓన్లీ ఈ ఫోర్ ఆపరేషన్ పర్ఫామ్ చేయడానికి దే ఆర్ స్ట్రగ్లింగ్ ఇన్ లాట్ ఆఫీస్ లో నా డ్యూటీ ఏంటంటే ఇట్లా కొన్ని మెడికల్ వేసి ఇచ్చారు బాస్ ఒక పన్నెండు సెన్సార్లు ఉంటాయి అనమాట dual sensors which is for to get a pulse this is a pulse device meaning if you go to hospital to test the pulse once upon a time doctor will use stethoscope right so now doctor no need to use any stethoscope just doctor will connect show your finger okay he will connect the device that's it so this device will tell you what is the pulse oxygen levels, oxygen levels also it will tell you Uh, pulse oxygen levels and like the, uh, it, i'm searching for this image so almost all there are two medical devices are there body temperature sensor pulse oxygen and blood sensor blood pressure bp patient position sensor age flow sensor ecg I don't know the medical technology. So there are some different sensors. My responsibility is, you have to integrate all these medical devices in your mobile application. So, I will connect. For pulse, BP and everything is okay boss. There is one more device called glucometer. Glucometer in the sense what? It will tell you what is your glucose level. For all these things, just directly you can connect and you can test happily you can enjoy your work but for glucometer you had to give a blood sample for that for glucometer we had to give a blood sample so everyone will come and my colleagues are there right so everyone will come right mahesh test bp test pulse so they will ask okay uh, they will connect the devices and they will ask to test but no one will come for glucometer because they had to give the blood right correct or not so no one is coming to So every time, there is one Dettol and one Cotton, one Needle and one Glucometer. If four fingers are done, you can do it. If you don't know what to do, you can connect the Glucometer. You can test it. You can test it. You can test it. You can test it. So I'll tell, you, uh, I'll tell you more about this IoT concept. Uh, where exactly you can use this IoT concepts and all. We'll discuss when you start Android. and in android i'll explain you why android is one topic in that why android i'll explain you all the scenarios where exactly this android concept is used right now what kind of applications we are developing in the industry so those things we'll discuss okay hmm. so we diverted okay even though i know you are diver- diverting but at least you are you are learning something right you heard about a term called iot before that you don't know what is in by iot right so some people if they are really have an interest they will search in the internet what is iot correct or not 
So even though it is diverting, I know it's diverting, but it's very useful for you. So here, Facebook is having a huge amount of data. To load the data, they will prefer JSON rather than XML file. Because these two topics, this XML and JSON, mainly useful for, which is used to transfer the data. At that time, JSON occupies less space than the XML. So obviously the people are preferred to go for XML for data, so JSON for data transfer. But still, still in a lot of lot of existing projects, still the people are using XML. For data transfer, JSON is preferred. But user understandable format, JSON is not preferred. I have one that records was. If you represent the data in JSON format, it's very difficult for the user to understand. Correct on that. You are in, you are a, imagine you are you don't know anything in the IT boss. For example, I'll give two files, an XML file and one Java file. So which one is more understandable or readable format? XML or JSON? XML, right? Even in layman also can understand. Okay, it is having some multiple employee details. So this is an individual employee record. So these two are the very, very important topics in the industry right so we understand one thing what is the advantage of xml is what xml is interoperable which is used to transfer the data between technologies okay so this is the first advantage of xml next what is the second advantage easily we can maintain the data next So for this one also, uh, I give an example so that you will understand. In my intermediate second year, I completed, uh, in the year of 2006, I completed intermediate second year. At that time, I have some little bit knowledge in micro, in MS Office. MS Office, typing, paint all there, right? In the year 2006, so after completion of my intermediate, so there are some ration card entries are there. In my village, few people are came from the city and they are doing some, they are collecting some ration card entries. So my father told, are any computer So I went to there, I asked boss, I know computers, okay, I know MS office, okay, so I know how to type the data and all in the year 2006. So they also said, okay, uh, just enter two, three records. Okay, I entered two, 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 three records, okay, they also satisfied. And they, they told, okay, from tomorrow onwards you can come. So I worked for two months. At that time, in that ration card software, they maintained the data in XML format. I remember the format. At that time, I don't know this is XML. This is uh, the advantage of XML is interoperable. At that time, I don't know all these things. But I remember they stored the data in one tax format. That is XML. Now I understood why they stored the data in a XML format. The main reason is XML, one of the another advantage of XML, XML is used as textual database. XML is used as what? The textual database. If you, can, if you want if you want to maintain, you can maintain some data in XML. Correct or not? Come on, boss. What you will do with the database? You store my data, right? So same data you can store in XML. Same data you can store in the XML format, right? Here also you are maintaining the data, then why you need to go for databases? It's uh, Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, there are different databases out there, right? So why you have to go for databases? So we discuss that part also. At that time, they stored the data in XML. At that time, I don't know all these things, but now I understood why they stored the data in XML form. The first thing is, they can, they can, they can maintain the data in some database servers. But database servers are not the free of custom. You have to purchase the database servers. This RK, this SQL server, they will not provide free of cost. They will not provide the free of cost. Okay? So we have to purchase the database servers. And there are not one or two systems. In the entire AP, imagine there are one lakh villages are there. For each and every village, the government has distributed two or three systems. So how many database servers they have to purchase? Hardly three or four lakh database servers they have to purchase. So it's a huge amount of cost. That is a one disadvantage. One disadvantage. Second disadvantage is the people who are working, 
all that software, they don't know anything about the IT. They don't know how to install Marvel software. They don't know how to install SQL Server. And the systems also not having that much capability of holding the SQL Server database kind of thing. There is a second second disadvantage. To maintain these database servers, to install the database servers, the government has to appoint few system administrators to go and install in each and every machine. So again, this is also huge amount of budget, right? Okay. These are the two tips they consider and they store the data in Excel. To maintain the data in XML format, there is no need to purchase any database servers. The first problem is removed. Second thing is, you don't need to be any expert in the installation software and all. To maintain the data in XML file, if you have an operating system, you can maintain, you can store the data in XML. Is there any software is necessary to maintain the data in XML? Alright, you don't need to maintain any. So that's why at that time, they store the data in XML. But you have one disadvantage is also there. The disadvantage is anyone can open this XML file. There is no need. security for the people. So that's why what they did is in the year 2006, for every one month, one people will come from Hyderabad. They will collect the data. They will take this XML file. So they will go to Hyderabad. The XML data, they are having some XML data, right? That XML data they will store into one server. They will store the data into one. So here, the lesson of the story is you have to understand one thing. XML is used as textual database. If you want to maintain some data, you can maintain some data in a XML file without any software and you don't need to purchase any software to maintain the data in a XML. The second advantage of XML is what? The second advantage of XML is XML is used as textual database. XML is used as textual database. The third thing is XML is used as deployment descriptors. What is the third one? XML is used as deployment descriptors. What is it about deployment descriptors? So you are learning PHP, right? In the morning sessions you are learning PHP. So, no. Why? Java 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 XML is used as deployment descriptors. At least you have one program. <laughs> so leave it. So how many of you are having the knowledge advanced job at least basic things? So after developing your web application, let us say I developed an application by using servers. After developing your web application, you have to deploy your application into some containers. Containers are servers. Okay. So we have some containers are there like Tomcat, WebLogic, WebSphere, different, different containers are there. After developing the web application, we will deploy our web application into the containers. To deploy the web application into the containers, you have to write one file. Which file you have to write? Which file you have to write? So all of you know about Android, right? All of you know about Android. You are attending the workshops also attended. So uh, uh, there is a file called manifest.xml file. In case of advanced Java, there is a, uh, in case of servlets or JSP, there is a file called web.xml. In case of .NET, there is a file called web-config.xml. What are all these things? If you take any technology, there is a mandatory of an XML file. So all these XML files are called as deployment descriptors. This web.xml, manifest.xml, web-config.xml, all these files are what? Deployment descriptors. Deployment descriptors in the sense, let us take after developing my web application, we have to deploy the web application into some servers, right? Let us take Tomcat server. 
So by using which programming language you develop your Java code, your code, web code? By using Java, I developed my web application. I developed. So after developing the web application, we had to deploy that web application into some servers like Tomcat. This Tomcat server is developed by using C and C++. If you give a, if you give the Java code to the Tomcat system, a C and C++ system, the C and C++ cannot understand your Java code. So you had to tell to the C and C++ system about your Java application. Boss, this is my application. This class will do this task. This class will do this one. You had to specify about your application to the C and C++ system. You specify about your application to the, the container. We'll write a file called web, web products. Definitely in PHP also. Definitely you have to write a file. That should be also an XML file. I don't know the exact file name in PHP. Definitely you had to write one file to deploy your project into some container. In case of Java, that is web.xml. In case of in case of .NET, in case of .NET, they will deploy the they will deploy their application in the IAS server. So they will write a file called in case of .NET, they will, they will write a file called web .xml. A best example if you take Android, in Android we will write the code using Java. We will submit our Java code to Android. By using which by using which technology this Android platform is developed? By using Java it is developed. Alright, Linux, Linux means this is also developed by using C and C++, right? If we send it, if we give a Java object to this C and C++ system, it will not understand. The Android platform will not understand. To specify about your application to Android platform, you will write a file called manifest.xml. So all these files are called as deployment descriptors, manifest.xml, web-config.xml, web.xml, all these files are called as what? Deployment descriptors. If you take any technology, SAP, Java, .NET, or if you take any technology, definitely you must know about the XML. Okay. So these are the some of the advantages of XML. Okay. Interoperable, which is used as some textual database. So XML XML is used as deployment descriptors. Okay. So these are some of the advantages. Apart from this, there are other advantages also there. But these are the major advantages of XML. Next. This is on sample XML file. This is one sample XML file. To write this XML file, I follow some rules. In Yala and create Jalabir. Correct or not? There's an octa I follow some rules to create this XML file. What are the rules I followed to create this XML file? So every opening tag must be closed. So every tag must be properly nested. That is one rule. Next. You cannot create with capital letters. Same. So okay, A sensitive. Next. All data in one All? data in one So meaning can you create multiple multiple tags? So I told you right, HTML is introduced from XML. In one file, can you write multiple times HTML by HTML? Okay, HTML file in post. A HTML file or HTML by HTML multiple times write chart. Mm -hmm. Cannot write. Why? Why boss? HTML is also following the XML rules because HTML is HTML is introduced to using XML, right? So HTML also follows the XML rules. One of the XML rule is every XML file have a root element. Every XML file have only one root element. It should not contain multiple root elements. In this XML file, what is the root element here? Yes. Employees is the root element. So in this XML file, you cannot create multiple employees by employee stacks. You cannot create. Only you can create one employee. So if you want to maintain multiple employee records, inside these employees, you can create multiple employee records. So every element must be properly nested. Next. Every XML file have only one root element. So these are the two rules we discussed. Next, is there any other rules? 
can you give a space between the tag name? For example, first name is there. So can I write first place name? Come on, boss, you can give. There is a tag call. For example, I want to store first name here. I want to store first name. If you want to give first name, let us take a little tag, first place. First name. Come on, boss. Can you give or not? Okay. So you cannot. XML tag name should not contain any spaces. XML tag name should not contain any spaces. That's why right. there are n number of tags in the HTML, right? There are n number of tags in the HTML. In that HTML, so have you find any space in the tag name? No. So body tag, paragraph tag, next canvas tag. There are n number of tags are there, right? You cannot give space between the tag names. That is the third rule. Should not contain spaces. Every XML file should contain only one root element. Next, every element must be properly nested. These are the rules to write an XML file. Next. Can you start with number? An XML file, an XML tag can start with a number. In HTML, we are having some tags h1, h2, h3. So why they given? 1h, 1, 2, 1h, 2h, 3h. Can you write like that? No. That is also one of the rule of XML. XML tag should not start with number and the special characters. Underscore will accept. Okay. These are some of the rules to write an XML file. XML is used as deployment descriptors. Next. What are the rules to write an XML file? Every XML file have only one root element. Next. Every element, element or tag. Or every XML tag must be every tag, every XML tag, every XML element. Element means nothing but the tag name. So must be properly nested. And the XML file should not contain should not contain spaces between the tag names should not contain spaces between the tag names next should not start with number and special characters should accept underscore okay so these are the sum of the rules to write an XML file. Every XML file have only one root element. Every XML element must be properly nested. Should not contain the spaces between the tag names. Should not start with the number and the special character. Okay. So these are some of the rules to write an XML file. So complete it. Next thing is. <coughs> This is my XML file. This is the XML file we created. Imagine. So in XML, there are two terminologies are there. The two terminologies are one is a well form XML file and the second thing is a value XML file. Let us take validness and well formness. In XML, you have to understand the two terminologies. What are the two terminologies? When the XML file is called as a valid XML file, and the when the XML file is called as a well formed XML file. An XML file follows all the basic rules of XML, then the XML file is called as valid XML. If the XML file follows all these rules, every XML must be properly nested, should contain only one root element, should not contain the spaces, should not start with the number and special character and all. If XML file follows all these rules, then the XML file is called as what? Valid, valid. valid XML file. So how can you test? How can you test the validness of the XML file? How can you test the validness of XML file? Huh? 
My question is, how to test the validness of the XML file? For example, you written some Java code, boss. After, after, after writing of your Java code, you will submit your Java code to whom? Some compiler. Compiler will tell you, it will check whether you followed all the rules of Java or not. Correct or not? So here, I create an XML file I created. I want to test the validness of my XML file. Whether my, I created the XML file, whether this XML file is valid XML file or not. How to test this validness of the XML file? By using browsers also you can test. Browsers are there, right? Internet browser, Chrome browser. So these browsers also you can test the validness of the XML file. For example, This is an XML file we created. Okay, so we'll save this XML file with, with dot XML extension employees dot XML. How to test the validness of the XML file? We had to open this XML file in a browser. Okay, so XML file is it's a valid XML file. For example, if there is any mistake in the XML file. For example, I forgot to close this one. The employee. I forgot to close the employee. It's not a valid XML file. Okay. If it is a valid XML file, you'll get the tags also you'll get. Okay. So this is not a valid XML file. So you can test the validness of the XML file even in Browsers also you can test the validness. Next, what is the next one? Well formness. So what is in my well formness? So well formness means here these are some of the basic rules to create an XML file. So these are the built-in rules. These are the built-in rules to create an XML file. My requirement is my requirement is employee ID should not contain characters. Employee ID means I want to take only a number type of data. If user is given any character, I don't want to take the character. I want to give a restriction to the user. User can, you can enter only a number type of data only you can insert. For example, name is there, right? Name means you can character, you can enter only 20 characters. Designation maximum length is 10 characters. Password minimum length is 6 characters. Like I want to provide these type of restrictions I want to provide to my XML file. So how can you provide the restrictions to the XML file? My own restrictions. Name is 20 characters. Password is 6 characters minimum length. Employee ID contain only number type of data. Name should contain only character type of data. So these type of restrictions I want to provide for my XML file. How can you provide? So you can provide your own restrictions to the XML file by using DTD and XST. So DTD is termed as document type definition. Definition This is not definition also was this, this is just abbreviation for DTD. So DTD is termed as document type. XSD is termed as document type definition and XML schema definition. Okay. So by using DTD and XSD, we can provide our own rules to the XML file we can provide. By using DTD and XSD, we can provide our own rules to the XML file. So now tell me what is DTD and what is XSD? DTD is termed as document type definition. By using DTD, we can provide our own restrictions to the XML file. That is the answer. There is a definition of DDD, which you can provide your own rules to the XML file by using DDDs. XSD is termed as XML schema definition, same thing, which is we can provide our own rules to the 
external file. DDD is deprecated. DDD is deprecated. No one is using DDDs nowadays. We can provide very less restrictions we can provide by using DDD. So now the industry latest, latest one is what? Yes, we can provide n number of restrictions we can provide by using this access. So here, if you take any web technology, even if you take uh, server also if you are writing the code or if you are writing the code using PHP or Android, mm -hmm. the XML file follows, the XML file follows, definitely the XML file follows an access name. Now it is, because it is replicated, right? This is used in the years of 2002 to 2005, 2006, so right? So from 2007, so everything is excesses. No one is using DDDs nowadays. If you take any XML file, the XML file follows what? Existing. Practically, I will show you uh, when you are discussing about the Android and Advanced Java. If you take any XML file, the XML file contains what? Existing. The first tag, the first tag in your XML file, it contains, it is what? Existing location. Okay. So, are you clear about XSD and DDD? At least you know, right? What is DDD and what is XSD? I'll show you in advanced Java and Android. I'll show you where the XSD is configured. But you will never get a requirement of creating the rules to the XML file. We are using some frameworks, right? The people will provide the restrictions. Just we'll follow the restrictions. So we about the DDD, concentrate on the XSD part, XML schema definition, which is used to provide our own rules to the XML file. So are you clear up to this? Word XML. Okay. So now the requirement is now the requirement is the data is available in an object format. The data is available in which format? Object format. I want to convert that object to one XML file. So you are under you are discussing about this one, right? To transfer the data we use XML or JSON. For example, to send the data to the .NET system, we are using what? Just so we understand, to send the data to the .NET system directly, you cannot send. We'll write the data in XML or JSON format. We'll send the data. My requirement is here: the data is available in an object format. I want to write that object into either XML or JSON. We are not talking about JSON right now. We are discussing about XML. So, what is the requirement? I want to write my object data into XML. Let us say here you got one response from the server. Let us say .NET server. Here also the requirement is I want to read the data from the JSON. I want to read the data from XML. What is the requirement? I want to write my object data into XML and I want to read the data from the XML file to in my Java program I want to read. Okay. So this is the requirement. Writing your object data into XML and reading the XML data into an object. So this is the requirement. So for this requirement, so this is Java and this is XML. The requirement is I want to convert, I want to convert this Java object data into an XML format and from XML to Java. So for converting this, we have a concept called the abstraction between these two things, the XML file and the Java file. And the abstraction between the Java file and the XML file is XML parsers. XML parser is an abstraction between the XML parser is an abstraction between the Java file and XML file. To convert your object data into XML or for reading the data from the XML file, we use what? We use XML parsers. Climax came into the picture. Okay, so introduction part is completed, right? Sigma is at end boss. Okay, the climax is climax is not time boss. In XML, in XML part, the climax is for converting your object data into XML or from the XML to object format, you have to know what? 
So for converting your object data into XML and XML to object format, you have to know what? XML parsers you have to know. If you know XML parsers, then only you can write your object into XML and XML to object. So in Java, there are two types of XML parsers are there. One is JAXP and another one is JAXP. In Java, there are two types of parsers are there. One is JAXP parser and another one is what? JAXP parser. Everyone is listening the classes. So, I am an number one trainer for web services in the market. You know what is in a web services? Web services which is used to establish a communication between two different technologies. Web services which is used to establish a communication between two different technologies. If you want to establish a communication between two different technologies, we use a web services concept. So in that web services concept, this XML and JSON plays a key role. If you miss these classes, you miss the classes, right? Once again, you will not get off these type of classes. Definitely, once again, you will not get these type of classes. In the elaborative way, Chapar was. Because I faced all the problems. I faced all the problems, so I designed my content like this. College don't put DOM parser and DOM and document object model. That's it. But for you understanding, to understand what is in my .dt, what is in my XSD, we discussed a lot of things we discussed, right? So before that, we discussed what are the rules, what are the advantages, what is XML first of all. There is some order because we are the experts in this domain. Netlo jadukunna points of say, but you will not understand. When you will understand, then you listen, you will understand. Web services concept is not for freshers. In the market, some people will attend my classes who are having 10 years experience, 8 years experience, they will attend for my classes. Web services means not, XML is the basic for web services. That's it. Okay. So, Okay. So, concentrate. So, I think under inter are going to win. So, there are two types of parsers. Are, there are two parsers are there, maybe. In XML, one is JAXP parser, another one is what? JAXP parser. JAXP is crowned as Java API for XML parser. JAXP is crowned as what? Java API for XML parsing. Or, so Java API for XML parsing, JAXP is termed as Java architecture for XML binding. JAXP is termed as what? Java, Java API for XML parsing. JAXP is termed as Java architecture for XML binding. Okay, Java API for XML parsing, Java architecture for XML binding. There are n number of third party implementations are there for these XML parsers. If you type in if you type in the Google, there are n number of parsers are there. Third party parsers, all these things are. By default, JDK is providing, by default, JDK is providing few XML parsers. That is, the implementation for this JAXP is one of the implementation is DOM parser and SAX parser. So one of the XML parsers, by default in JDK we are having these two parsers, DOM parser and SAX parser. JASP is, JASP is not having any method. These two are the methodologies. There are two parsers, JASP and JASP. In JASP, these are the two methodologies for XML parsing. Okay? So JASP is not having any methodologies. Okay? So these are the two methodologies. What are the two methodologies? DOM parser and Sax parser. This Sax parser is it's a read-only parser. 
meaning only we can read the data from this fax file. We cannot, we cannot write or we cannot update the data into XML by using this fax file. It's only, it's a read-only parser. This, by using this DOM parser, you can perform the crude operations on the XML file. I mean, you can create an XML file, you can read an XML file, you can update and you can delete, you can perform these operations by using DOM parser. Java is preferred if you are writing, if you are writing an XML file or modifying or updating the XML file, go for DOM parser. For reading the data, go for SAX parser. In case of chart speed. In case of chart speed. Now the people are familiar with chart speed. For developer, developer, the developer is familiar and flexible with chart speed than the chart speed. Because Directly you can convert your object data into XML with hardly four or five lines of logic. But in case of Jaxp, you had to write a lot of logic you had to write. For writing the data into some file or for reading the data from a file, you had to write some thousands of logic you had to write in case of Jaxp. In case of Jaxp, it's very simple. Just you had to submit our object to Jaxp. Within one or two lines of code, you can convert your object data into XML and you can read the data from that XML file. So now, so next we have to start with XML parsers we have to start. Okay, next we have to start what XML parsers. So we'll, we'll discuss these two parsers in the next couple of classes. What is JAXP? How to perform uh, the crude operations by using DOM parser? How to read the data by using SAX parser and JAXP parser? This is one type of data representation. That is XML. This is one type of data representation that is XML. So what is another format? The latest format and the alternative format for this XML. That is JSON. Are you clear up to this with XML? We'll start. We'll start this. Uh, we'll discuss this XML parser topic we'll discuss. Remaining all these things are theory, theory discussion. These two are only the articles. We had to, we had to develop some code which is used to convert your object XML and XML to We'll develop some sample applications in our, in our classroom for converting these things. So just keep it, keep aside these two things, XML parsers. We'll discuss that part. Programmatically, we'll, we'll discuss that part. Next, what is the another format for data transfer? That is JSON. JSON. The latest format, so most widely used format in nowadays, that is JSON. So JSON is termed as what? JSON is termed as JavaScript object notation. JSON is termed as JavaScript object notation. We have only one problem in JSON, that is a readability problem. A normal user, which takes some time to understand, it's not that much flexible compared to XML. But programmatically, it's very simple to pass the JSON file and Programmatically, it's very simple to pass a JSON file, but programmatical XML parser is a little difficult to pass. Right? JSON is very simple to pass a data. JSON is termed as JavaScript object notation. In the entire JSON file, the data is represented only with two things. The data is represented in the JSON file. In the JSON file, the data is The data is represented in two ways. The two ways are one is by using JSON object, by using JSON object will represent the data. The next thing is by using JSON array will represent the data. In the entire JSON file, we'll represent the data only in two ways. One is by using JSON object will represent the data, and other one is by using JSON array we will represent the data. So here the JSON object is going to represent with flower bracket. The JSON object is going to represent with flower bracket. And the JSON array is going to represent with the square bracket. The entire data is going to represent with only these two things. The JSON object and the JSON array. The JSON object and JSON array. If you have multiple values, we will represent with array. If you have a single object, if you have a single value, then we will go for. JSON object. Let us take 
I'll write on sample XML file. We'll see what is the equivalent JSON file for this one. This is on XML data. This is on XML file. So we'll see what is the equivalent JSON file for this XML file. So can you tell me what is the equivalent JSON file for this XML file? So can you tell me what is the equivalent equivalent JSON file for this XML file? So here, this main root tag is nothing but an object. In XML terminology, this is called as element. The way the user terminology we call as tag. Okay. In machine terminology, in XML terminology, we call this one as an element. This is a main root element, right? This is a main root element. Which one? Students. So here, this one will represent the, the curly bracket. This student object contains multiple student records, right? It contains multiple student records. It may contain n number of records. We'll give a name for this one. Let us say it may contain multiple students. The delimiter is here, the semicolon. Sorry, colon. Okay. So the student contains single single value or multiple value? Single or multiple words? Multiple. In case of single, next you can represent with object. Next you can represent with object, but here it's multiple, 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 so that's why you represent with array. So square bracket, array will represent. Next. Array contains, array contains multiple student, right? Each, each individual record is nothing but one object. This is an object. Next. This is one object. Each and everything is one object. So object is going to represent with what? Or brackets. This student object contains SID, comma, let's specify value. Sorry. The delimiter is comma here between the value and value. SID 1, 2, 3. Next one is S name. JSON supports what? Data. data types. For example, here I given a number. So double quotations are given for this number. No, right? It will take, it will take int type automatically. For example, here I specified double quotes. Automatically it will take string type. If you give a float value, it will take float. If you give double value, it will take double. If you give character, it will take character. So we have a data type support in JSON. We don't have the data data. Data type support we don't have in Excel. There is also another disadvantage of XML. So the people of why the people of prefer to go for JSON. JSON supports the data types. With respect to size, it's very yes. less and readability also. Programmatically easily you can convert this JSON data into an object format. So if you have one more student record, then comma curly braces. 
again the same thing s id 124 s name JSON supports the data types. For example, we specify a double quotes protein string. We don't feel only number in the integer term. At the time of reading the data also, for reading the data from this one, you have to specify get integer. Get integer of SID. And for this one, get string of S name. Get string of quotes. Like that. Okay? So JSON supports the data types. This is another record. So we will close with the record. Close the individual object we close. What is the next one? You have to close the array. array we have to close and we have to close the main no. object we have to close. So you have to specify the values. Characters are number in the sense of text in that one. ID also, we have to mention the string type. There is only alternative type. Right? Even that, let us say my my employee ID is let us say LEX123. So can you store it integer type or float type? We have to store it string type. So this is the equivalent JSON file for this XML file. So are you understand this JSON format? So now the most preferred format to transfer the data is JSON than the XML. So in case of XML, the JDK is providing some built-in parsers for reading the data, like DOM parser, SACS parser, JAXB and all. In case of JSON, we don't have any support, we don't have any support in JDK for the JSON parsing. Here also we need some parsing, right? So same like XML parsers, here also for converting your object to JSON and JSON to object, we need JSON parsers. In JDK, we don't have any Built-in JSON parser we don't have. We have some third-party JSON parsers are there like uh, Jackson is on parser, Jettison is on parser, Google is providing an API called JSON. Okay, so these are the simple JSON. There are n number of third-party implementations are there for converting your object to JSON and JSON to object. We can use any one of the third-party library for converting this object to JSON and JSON to object. Okay? So these are the two data transfer formats in the industry to transfer the data. Okay. So in our next class, we'll see the XML parsers. Saturday was weekend for me also. Madam told you, right? If you are started working, then you can take Saturday, Sunday, Yeah, yes, I, I booked a ticket at 7 o'clock. Mad Max movie in that An English movie called Mad Max. Now, life of first time English movie in theater. I hate English movies and Hindi movies, especially Hindi movies. I hate. abstract Shah Rukh Khan, Salman Khan, Amit Khan, and the abstract faces. Abstract and Dino, right? You know abstract classes? You know abstract classes, right? All the faces are abstract faces. Mahesh Babu, Paul Kalyan, Kalyan. So that's why I hate Hindi movies completely. But I see the trailer of Mad Max. I impressed a lot with the trailer. So, I think the first time theater law of English movie you want to get now. So, you had to encourage, right? <laughs> 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 Sorry, Sorry. 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 Sorry.